Given the recent events of the Chinese spy balloon over America, I wanted to give our members of the media a little correct information to go by. The use of balloons for various warfares is not new at all. One of the first times observation balloons were used for war was during the First Napoleonic War as an observation balloon, and again during the Franco-Prussian War. Especially during the siege of Paris in 1870-71, where also dignitaries and messages got in and out of the beleaguered city. During the American Civil War, observation balloons were in use also. Their operators would use telegraph lines to send messages of enemy movements back to Earth real time. For this reason, specialty weapons were developed and employed to shoot these down including high-powered rifles and small-caliber cannons aimed upwards. The use of balloons developed into the airship before the First World War, where large Sevillan airships initially flew so high over British cities that they were able to drop bombs on them unhindered in the first aerial bombings of history. The Sevillans were armed with machine guns to ward off Allied fighters and even escape planes at times but soon they began to suffer losses from ground fire and enemy fighters alike. Also over the World War I trenches, balloons were used for observation and artillery spotting. Balloonists with the telephone line back to Earth would report on shell impacts. They were issued a parachute for rapid exit when enemy fighters appeared to shoot them down. During the Second World War, barrage balloons were extensively employed in large numbers to counter enemy bombers. Tethered to steel cables hanging over cities and lightly targets for German bombers and fighters, such as the D-Day fleet, the steel lines would actually tear through the wings of planes getting entangled in them. Also during the Second World War, the Japanese, anxious to strike back at the U.S. mainland, developed small balloon bombs. These were made of very thin rice paper, sometimes made by Japanese schoolchildren. Several smaller incendiary bombs were attached to the balloons, and these were set adrift at the right time into the jet stream. Thus, they would slowly float towards the American mainland. The intention was to start forest fires, causing havoc in America. However, it was a particularly wet spring, so over very few of them worked as intended. Over 1,000 of these bombs were sent by the Japanese during the war but less than 100 are known to have actually landed on the U.S. mainland. Some of these went as far as Texas. However, there were several casualties. In May 1945, an Oregon minister and his wife and their five children went out for a forest outing. As he was parking this car, he heard his wife yell out that they had found something. But before he could get to them in the forest, the bomb went off, exploding, and killing his 26-year-old wife and his five children. A tragedy of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, certainly. The news was then suppressed in order that the Japanese not learn of this small success and thus inciting them to do more. This was only learned of after the war had ended. These were very flimsily made of cheap materials, but it is entirely possible some of these may still remain unfound in the forests of America. These were, of course, a far cry from the modern, advanced, high-altitude, high-tech airships or balloons we operate today. But the concept remains the same. In the late 20th century, the development of computer-controlled spy balloons resulting in greater accuracy in aerial reconnaissance and traffic monitoring as well at low cost. These computer-controlled balloons are equipped with navigation systems, and are deployed in various locations to provide aerial photographs and surveillance footage. They can even detect movement on the ground, providing incredibly detailed surveillance capabilities. They can be remote controlled and set for predestined routes. Modern spy balloons are now able to monitor for suspicious behavior given their parameters, alert ground forces, and even provide countermeasures against threats. As spy balloon technology continues to evolve, its potential applications in both military and commercial realms will become more widespread. These spy balloons are an important part of both military and commercial surveillance technology. With their abilities to provide a far-off aerial surveillance with advanced countermeasures, as technology continues to advance, we will see far more of these around the world, given their low cost. 
As we have seen in this past week, and given the delayed reaction before finally making the decision to shoot down this most recent intrusion of U.S. airspace by a Chinese spy balloon. But what does this mean? There are several concerns we need to address here. One is the method with which it was shot down. The use of a missile is extremely unfortunate and a very poor choice. Nothing happens fast in a balloon. Every ounce of helium or hot air moves slowly, lifts or drops the balloon slowly, unless impacted by a catastrophic event. Had only a few small holes been punctured in the balloon, such as by a flyby, jet such as an F-16 with a 50 cal machine guns, it would slowly have vented its helium and drifted to Earth safely. This would have made recovering the onboard equipment far easier and safer and could have been employed far earlier. Also, given the indecision of the government and the Air Force, this can be seen as a lack of decision-making skills and determined leadership, and it telegraphs clearly to the Chinese or any other enemy that the same might happen next time. Thus, there will be a delay next time. And the danger of this with a balloon such as this and what it could carry. It had the size of two school buses. Thus, a nuclear device technically could be detonated tactically in the right place, causing an EMP which could devastate our counter-strike capabilities in communication before a possible full-scale attack. On the nation's defenses or offensive weapons, remember this was allowed to be flown over one of the U.S. nuclear weapons fields. And when the Pentagon says it's monitoring the situation, well, so is the balloon surveillance equipment watching and monitoring, filming, and sending back data. Also, it's a very real possibility to deploy an aerosol agent, such as an airborne virus or heavy chemical agent weapon. It slowly would spread these, given the favorable wind conditions, over large cities. Experiments were done with such over American cities by the CIA in the early 60s with success. And given that everybody is weaponizing viruses these days, it must be taken into account when these balloons appear again. In any event, it most certainly also could be seen as a first strike weapon. The Chinese weather balloon that Beijing claims was blown off course over the United States' most important intercontinental ballistic missile site is not the first time that would seem to see a secret spy mission go off script. And it's certainly not the first time a government had to find an explanation for interesting adventures. The Chinese is probably just taking a page of the 1947 U.S. government cover-up playbook that we'll call it a weather balloon. Nothing to see here. And seriously, given the complete lack and faith we have in most governments and media institutions currently, for anybody to claim it was just a weather balloon truly does not get very far in the current public mind.